Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Eric Posada, the visiting professor of choral music at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. I'm also the founder and artistic director of Pasión Professional Chorus, based out of South Texas. Welcome, and thank you for joining me for today's session. True Colors, Score Study, and Marking the Score with Color. It's an honor to be with you today. Today we'll discuss the purpose of this session and how it can help you in your score study and in your choral rehearsals. I will introduce you to my methodology regarding the selection of colors and how I mark the score, but the beauty of this session is that ultimately you will make it your own. We will focus on four scores. The first one is Sweet Rivers for tenor, tenor bass choir. The second one is Psalm 23 by Randall Stroop, um, arranged for soprano, soprano, alto. The next score will be While Shepherds Watch Their Flocks for SATB Chorus by Craig Courtney. And we will conclude with the first movement of Ole Yellow Sunrise Mass, The Spheres. And finally, we will touch base again at the end. Hopefully, I will have inspired you to begin your creative journey in marking the music in color. So the purpose of this session. The first thing I want to discuss is score study. So when we are score studying in preparation for our rehearsals, there's a number of things we as choral conductors engage in. The first thing is playing and singing. So I know that um, during my doctoral studies, we had to play. So since I'm a bass, I would have to sing the soprano part and play the tenor part on the piano, or sing the tenor part and play the soprano alto and bass on the piano as well. Uh, my professor at Bielin never allowed me to sing my own part, the bass baritone part, um, but I had to know all the others. If I was singing the soprano part and playing the other three and I had to take it down the octave, then I would also have to move the other three parts down the octave as well so that it maintained that relationship. As our studies progressed, I often had to, for instance, sing the viola part in the viola clef and play the SATB voices, or maybe I sang the tenor part, played the cello, and stomped the, the violin part in my left foot. So there's a whole number of um, combinations that you can have, but the purpose is score studying and really um, getting inside the score and, you know, from mentally, emotionally, but also physically being able to move um, in relation to what's going on in, in the music. Additionally, my teacher, Alan Hightower, his direct, his teacher, his mentor, Donald Nguyen, said that for every minute of music, as choral conductors, we needed to spend at least two hours per that minute. So if a piece is four minutes long, then we have eight hours score study before we ever stand in front of that choir. Now imagine you're conducting the Rudder Requiem or uh, the Verdi Requiem or anything that's of an extensive work or a large scale tour de force, then again, you multiply that 40 minute work by two hours, and that's the time you need to put in before you stand in front of the, the ensemble. Now, other things that we focus on are a cappella singing. Can I jump around from part to part a cappella? You know, I can start with, okay, let me just sing the soprano part a cappella, not just the solfege, but um, on text, on the foreign language and stay in tune? Can I then jump around and sing all the parts a cappella? Do I know the score well enough? 
in that sense. Um, by doing this, we have identified problematic areas. We can circle them and rehearse them and, and provide strategies before we ever stand in front of the choir because we know if, if, if I miss a certain spot in the music, then there's a good chance that my singers will as well. Um, we study the history of the piece, so let's talk a little bit about the, the composer. Let's find out, okay, what time period is this in? What was going on in society at that time or all across the world? So we find out a little bit more about the piece and um, the context in which it was composed. Again, we find out more about the, the composer. Um, where did this piece land in, in his or her canon of music? Uh, what was going on? What were the circumstances? What about the commission? You know, we want to understand all of those areas um, surrounding the composition. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the poetry. You know, what was this a particular poem, a collection of poems? Does this come from the mass ordinary? Um, did the composer write this text? Was it a friend of theirs? So we want to know about the poetry. We want to know the translation as well, and what the lyricist was going through at that at that period of time, and how the composer set that particular music. Uh, text to music. What was the story? What is the story of the music? You know, was this a um, inscription inside of a concentration camp? Was this a collection of poems and the person that wrote them committed suicide? We want to know the story and then how we can make it our own as well. If it's a foreign language piece, then we want to have the IPA written in as well and um, um, be able to help our students that way. Um, other things, you know, we talk about vowels, consonants, what's stylistically correct, um, et cetera. So all of these things we can discover through our score study. While I was an undergraduate at Texas Tech University, um, John Dixon took over the choral program. He's now at LSU. And I know he had this article in the Coral Journal, A Magical Eye for Musical Blueprints, and in it he speaks about his son, his young son, who had those books where you would hold it in front of you and either make your eyes cross-eyed or relax your eyes or um, any strategy that you may have and then you slowly pull that book or that image away and then you kind of unlock that 3D image. Um, from what you initially were able to view. I can see now that um, age plays a role in that. So I tried this the other day and I can sympathize with uh, John in, in um, experiencing the fact that I can't see anything, I can't see anything. Well, nowadays I have to take into consideration um, my age and where exactly my eyes kind of shift um, but I was able to, to, to see a couple of images, so I'm proud of that. Um, so John kind of got me going regarding um, unlocking the score and um, experimenting with colors during my second semester of conducting. So I'm grateful uh, that he opened that door for me. So I thought I'd include a couple of examples. You may not be able to, to see them now um, in real time, but this is the first one I was able to see, and, and as I crossed my eyes and, and moved the image away, <clears throat> it's entitled, Which Animals? So you will see a dog, and then the dog has other features uh, to it, whether it's um, elephant tusks or you know a different tail or a different body, but you start to see all these uh, different images combined with uh, the initial one of seeing the dog. This one I loved because it reminded me of my son. My son's five years old and he could probably have better success viewing these, but there's a kid and he's got a backpack on. And so you're able to see that as uh, the image um, unlocks itself to your eyes. So now we'll move on with an introduction regarding the colors um, that you see here. You know, it was 
up until now, I've always colored the score with matte pencils. That's what um, John introduced me to. Depending on the the paper that the that the music is written on, for instance, if you're going to conduct the Rudder Gloria, I bought the book, and matte pencils didn't work successfully on it, so I had to use some uh, types of markers that um, wouldn't smear but also were visible and didn't quite bleed into the next page. So this will be a little introduction regarding um, colors. Again, these are going to be suggestions. Ultimately, you use the strategy that's going to make you successful. So for major notations, I'm going to start with red and black. And what I mean by major notations, the form, let's say it's um, ternary form, and we want to delineate the A section, the B, and then the return of the A. So I could use black, I could use red. Um, maybe it's the end of the choral phrase, but the big section continues, so maybe I'll use black. And then when it's a major shift, I'll use red. Other considerations, you'll notice sometimes the way um, musical systems are written, sometimes they're really close together. And it's hard if you're quickly looking down to see where exactly you're at, and it can be confusing. So sometimes I'll use a cesura marking the little railroad tracks in red or black um, to show where I am in the score and which system um, I'm currently looking at. The meter, I like to, particularly at the beginning, mark, you know, my conducting in three, two, four, um, circling the meter in red. And if it changes throughout, you know, I can um, circle the whole measure or that whole change or just simply mark in red what the next pattern I'm going to use. Again, I've learned this through trial and error. When I took that uh, conducting class with, with Dr. Dixon, it was a long time ago, you know, you're talking about you know, maybe 18 years ago. So in that time period, I have been able to, you know, say, okay, this works and this doesn't and that's too messy and make those changes. Key change. I want to make sure that I mark those for sure in red. Um, there's nothing like going along and all of a sudden we're all in different keys because we didn't uh, mark that. So key changes in red. Cues. I'll go in and mark cues in red so that my eye immediately goes to that area in the music. As we go along, you'll see sometimes I change those depending on the instrument or the voice part that's entering. But for sure, as you're beginning, you want to make sure that those, those cues are marked and red is a good color to select. Finally, word stress. Um, you know, as you're going along, it's not marked in the music, but particular phrasing, uh, arrival points, I like to mark those also in black, or if not, in just a regular pencil, but um, it's another opportunity to use the color black. Dynamics. So I'll take a step back. The idea is to go from the loudest being the hottest color, and as you become quieter, the colors will get a little cooler. Um, so that's kind of how I've shown here in, in the actual word dynamics. So we'll start, fortissimo is going to be red, and depending on the map col colors you have, or you know if you're using Foursquare as I am for this session, um, if they're really close together then maybe I'll have red and then I'll circle the dynamic. Forte, maybe a red-orange or not as strong, um, not as bold in your marking of Forte. For sure, Mezzo Forte, I will use orange. So again, we're working our way from the hottest colors to the coolest. So right in the middle is about a Mezzo Forte in orange. Mezzo Piano, then I'll go to a blue, a darker blue maybe. Piano, a lighter blue, or maybe a royal blue. And then I'll go to pianissimo, maybe a light green, or 
something similar that, that you feel works best for you. So I'll go in there now we had our, our major sections of music and then now I've gone in and marked and I marked cues. Now I'm highlighting these dynamics. In essence, this is what we're trying to create from the hottest, that sunrise or that sunset and the rest of the sky is cool as you get further away. All right, well, what about if our scores have instruments? And again, this is just what I've used and, and where I've settled over the years. Please feel free to make it work for you. So if, it's, if we have a brass section, I just think of what the actual brass section looks like, their instruments, and I think of yellow. So I'll mark brass parts in yellow. Woodwinds, I think about the flute, so you see they're kind of a silver or a gray. Of course, the clarinet's black, depending on how many instruments you're using. You could use black. Oftentimes, I'll use green for the oboe. I Don't ask me why, it's just, you know, maybe I've run out of colors, but I think about the oboe or, or the pastoral scene, um, pastoral, then or the pifa, I'll think of green pastures and I get the oboe. Strings, typically brown, the violin, the cellos, basses, viola. So I'll think of a brown. I might use a dark brown for violin and then a cooler brown for, for the cello and bass. Percussion, uh, just change it up a little bit. Uh, per, uh, I'll go with purple. Now again, if you have multiple instruments, then you have to either decide you're going to use the whole uh, section one color, like purple, or maybe I have different instruments, different colors. Um, it's ultimately up to you. And then how do we mark the choir and soloists? So when I think about a choir, I just think about skin tone. And I like to go with a khaki or a, a, a beige of some sort. Um, Typically, in my mind, what's worked for me before is soprano and alto treble voices. I think about a, a pink um, tenor basses. I might go with a light blue um, children's choir. Maybe if I haven't used green for the oboe, then I will um, use green for the children. Additional markings. Crescendo, I like to use orange. So as we are making the, um, the choir get louder or stronger, then again, I'm starting there with that mezzo forte-ish area and then crescendoing. So it's becoming warmer, I'm going with orange. As I diminuendo or cool off, I'm going towards blue. For me, another major marking is the ritardando or slowing down, maybe even the relentando as well. So. I'll mark that in red and maybe just kind of put dots, you know, so that I'm pacing that retardando. You'll see as we get to the Ole Yellow doublings or any unisons, I'll take, you know, the choir, the, the flesh, the, the peach color, and then I'll also double um, other moments when you're playing or singing the same part. Sometimes I'm going along and rather than using red, I might use yellow, but something that's going to catch my eye, say a certain instrument has been out for a very long time and all of a sudden on that page turn, I have to be ready to cue them. So I'll mark it in yellow, maybe an asterisk, maybe it's yellow and red or an arrow, but uh, something that's immediately going to remind me like, oh yeah, that they're going to come in now and it's going to happen immediately, so I don't want to miss it. And finally, I may draw arrows like black to jump from one part. Let's say that there's an instrument, the flute, that I need a cue, and then I need to jump back down to the tenor part and then jump around. Um, just depending on how dense the score is, I may need my eyes to kind of follow that arrow. Hopefully the product looks something like this. And we're using all these different colors. As the, the score becomes more complex, it does become a little bit more difficult. But 
um, hopefully with the system in place, um, it'll make sense to you and you can quickly access that in your mind and on your score. So what I'm going to do now is, is share my screen. Stop sharing that and then I am going to switch over. All right, so a disclaimer is that I've always marked my music with matte pencils and, as I mentioned, markers. So in order to present this session, I had to purchase Fourscore. I actually now also own an iPad, and I've familiarized myself the best I can with the app, and I think it's amazing, and I look forward to using it in the future. But please make sure you understand that I'm not focusing on the app itself, but giving you the basics and the introduction to coloring and marking your score with color. So please forgive me if there's features on there that I'm not util utilizing correctly. Okay. All right. So this is Sweet Rivers. I mentioned earlier it's uh, for tenor. I think I said tenor, tenor bass, but it's TBB. So I am going to go here to the first page and I am going to begin marking. So going by what I mentioned earlier, tenor, tenor, bass, or tenor, bass, bass, um, tenor, bass, choir, I'm going to use blue. So here it is. I don't think it needed to be transparent right now. So I'm going to mark each time the tenor, bass line is present. And then again here. All right. Notice here, um, I should have probably started with the bigger, um, the more major notations. So I'll go back and use red. Notice that there's three systems here. Now, it's pretty easy to discern, but just in case, I might go in and mark. You can kind of make it whatever is accessible for you and appealing. But let's say I'm going to use that, right? Um, at the beginning, I always like to know which um, meter I'm going to use. So maybe I'll use three up here. So I know I'm going to conduct in three. And let's say you want to use the, you want to mark the piano. So I'll go and use a gray. And you can make it as light um, as or as dark as you'd like. All right, so then I have a piano marking. And as you, you may recall, I started from the hottest colors to the coolest. So piano was going to be kind of a light blue. Yeah, another color here. How about go a little lighter. And I'm going to make it transparent so that you can see. All right, so then I'm going to come here. And I'm not great yet at coloring this. But now I have piano marked there. And I can make that a little bit bigger. All right, so I've, this is the one dynamic we have here. But let's say I, I think this opening line, Sweet Rivers of Redeeming Love, to me, again, love is going to be an arrival point. So I want to accentuate that. So I'm going to underline that. Um, you know, I think we should probably mark in a crescendo. So I'm going to come here, and I think we're going to include a crescendo here. All 
All right, so we're going to crescendo. Again, you can make this however you want. I'm just, um, like I said, I'm a novice here with the, with the app. Um, lie just before mine eyes. If you want another crescendo, then we can do the same here. I think that our arrival point might be eyes. Um, you know, maybe you want to mark something like more or, you know, anything that, that you feel should be included. Um, let me see what else. I'm going to do the same thing with Dove. And let's say just, you know, you're speaking about a Dove. Maybe you decide, okay, I don't want um, it to keep crescendoing, so I'm going to diminuendo. So this is the first page of my score. Now I've marked it in color, right? I'm going to go to the next page. So I'm going to start again in order. I know this is the tenor bass line. I had, um, I believe, yes, the piano. major delineations got to be careful because we have the pedal here now we could use the ruler and and delineate i've I used the ruler before so that it would be easier to discern between those um, what else maybe i want to show a cue since i'm conducting tenors and basses and i'm using blue maybe i Give them a cue right there. I have another major, so we're, we're changing um, meters. So maybe I go back again. And then it shifts back here. So maybe I write in two, and then here it shifts. Maybe you think that's too much marking, so you just put a three. Uh, we have a, another dynamic marking here. Let me see if I can get you one more light. And we have a pianissimo here. erase that um, it's a little not as transparent as I wanted it so now I've utilized um, some more dynamics so there's kind of an introduction to marking the score here it's a simpler uh, piece easier to, to mark um, and again only through trial and error will you figure out what your system is going to be all right I'm gonna move on to another score All right, let's go now to Psalm 23, Z. Randall Stroop. So the score is a little more complex or engaging or a little bit busier. So now we have a couple of instruments that we need to contend with, right? So I'll start here. I'm going to just start with the actual, with the systems and um, start again big picture and then work the details so I mentioned earlier maybe I use peach I won't use uh, pink but I'll use uh, peach for the choir and I still have a piano that's a little dark I see that there's a flute and oboe. So here you want to decide what colors you want to use. So I kind of used um, gray. Maybe I changed that and I use black for the piano.
and then I decide to use gray for the flute. And then my favorite I mentioned earlier using green for the oboe. And then I have uh, two systems, so I like to kind of do that. All right, so something that's important here, yes, we can still mark um, the fact that it's in four, right? It's up to you if you want to do something like this, which I typically do at least at the beginning. Um, but we have the piano comes in, right? So we have a cue done here if you want to. Maybe you decide that this is too much. So we have a Q, sorry, here. That's actually your first entrance. And then we have the oboe on beat three. And then the flute is here. And then we kind of have this duet back and forth. And then the choir comes in, right? So let's use Peach again. And they come in at a dynamic, I'm going to make this transparent as I can, of mezzo piano. And we still have mezzo piano here and here as well in the piano. And then I have a mezzo forte. Oops. Here. And since these crescendos are already written in, I'm just going to stay there and just kind of color them in. Now, having done score study, I know that this beginning is in unison at least that first measure, right? So what I like to do is I'm going to make this transparent. There's nothing worse than asking one part to sing and then you realize afterwards that there was another part or two or more that are singing the exact same thing or that the orchestra is playing the exact same pitches and you could have had them all rehearsed together, right? So I like to go in And I'll mark that. They're all in unison, and I can quickly see that. Right? Um, a couple of other markings we said um, word stress. And maybe you decide that you want a crescendo here. I would put it in the other ones, but I might. Um, make it too cloudy, um, but you have a crescendo there as well, right? So that's the first page. Now we've added some color to it. You start to unlock some of these mysteries of it. Let's go on to the next page. Again, I'm going to start the major notations. I'm going to use peach. I'll go with the piano. Okay, then I had flute, I used gray. And then I used green. Sorry, I'm getting a little sloppy here. The oboe. All right, and now we have a little bit more um, activity with dynamics. Let's see what else we have on mezzo forte here. I see some crescendos. I'm 
might make that a little bit darker orange, but it'll suffice for now. I have diminuendos. I also have a mezzo um, piano there. Make a little bit darker blue for that. Kind of similar to the diminuendo marking. Um, and then we have a cue over here at the end of that line when the choir returns to unison. So I could use that or I decide, you know what, it's important. I might go back to red. And then we have some more unison, as I mentioned. Ooh, we get a forte marking here. It's the little things in life to be excited about. All right, so this is, that's two pages of the, I missed one, of uh, Stroop. I missed a, there's a mezzo forte. If you want to include the pianist as well. That would be nice. They'd appreciate that. Um, some cues, look at the flute. The flute's been out for a little bit, so maybe I uh, decide to bring them in. Right, and then we again have this dialogue over here. This is important. Again here. Now maybe I'm going along and I decide, oh my gosh, I'm just, I'm not going to remember. I'm looking um, at the bottom, Death Stark Valleys, and I need to look up. So maybe I, you know, put an arrow and it helps me out immediately. Okay, so I'm going to exit out of here. Let's go to another piece. This is While Shepherds Watch Their Flocks. This is SATB by Craig Courtney. The first thing about this page, so it reminds me again of the of the foray requiem and the session that I attended once and you don't want to hire violins when there are no violins for the piece. There's only a violin solo. So here you want to be aware that, hey, wait a minute, at the beginning here, it starts off with tenor, tenor, bass, bass, right? So that's important. I'm going to go again with the blue. But maybe uh, since it's four-part tenor, bass, then I'll go maybe peach. Maybe blue. And I notice that it's bass one, it's in bass two. Right, um, go back to my dark red, it's in four, maybe I put that up here, or also here at the side. You can also use black here if you'd like, if you think it'll stand up. I, let's see, I'm going to come back down here. We have these fermati. Not going to be good with these, but I'll do my utmost for you. I'm using my wife's Apple <laughs> pencil here. Um, so we have Fermati. I have Dynamics as well.
maybe I want to mark something like, um, you know, base one, base two, just so that I can see that quickly. We find out again that this is in unison. So I could do this, or I could decide, since I'm using that light blue and I'm gonna stick with those voice parts, that maybe make it in blue. And then finally the tenors come in Or, you know, maybe if I don't like that, I can always go back to red or another color. We have the retardando, poco retardando. It's kind of up to you. So I found sometimes my scores get a little too busy. And, and if I do, if I conduct the piece a second time, I might change it up a bit. But um, this is just kind of how I started. And then the same thing here. I like this with the blue unison and the bases and then the khaki with the tenors because um, it remains consistent with their voice part. I'm going to skip over. So maybe we'll go here to, let's see, here's a key change. So let's you know, that might be something where I will. You know, make sure that that I can notice that quickly. Uh, but just going quickly over here. So I had the tenors in khaki. I had the basses. Let's go to blue. Maybe you have the altos in green. And I haven't used pink yet. I'll go here. And I'll use it here, Sopranos. And then I realize, OK, well, the altos and tenors are in unison. So which color am I going to use? Well, this is the first time the altos come in with them. So I might yield to the altos here. I love the alto voice. Should build the sound around the altos. So I might go bravely with the alto part. You'll notice the meter changing a little more frequently. Then we have the sopranos, and it's an important entrance. This is our first time they come in, and they're in unison. So we get, maybe we decide to go with the sopranos here. And they will kind of continue that. And then we have the tenors and basses in unison. Maybe I'll go with the basses this time. Since I'm a bass, sorry, they're not in unison the whole way. So you start to get some layers of colors. I know that I'm not finishing each one of these lines, and I apologize. I don't want to run out of time. And then I can use my orange. for these massive crescendos. I delineate. And now the music's starting to come alive for me in color. That 3D picture is unfolding. All right, now I'm going to skip over. I'm going to close with the Ole Elo Sunrise Mass. Now, I wrote my dissertation on the Sunrise Mass, and I can tell you that even for me, this looked daunting, right? I'm going to skip over to the fifth page. 
You'll notice this has double SATB choir, so you'll need to decide, do I want to use the same color for soprano choir one as soprano choir two, or do I have enough colors to make them all different? Um, also violin, you have violin 1A, violin 1B, violin 2. So same colors, same browns, you know. So those are some choices you'll need to make. I'm going to go to page 5, excuse me. This is really what gave me the idea for this session. If I look at this, I might decide I'm not going to conduct it. It's too busy. How am I going to know every part and what's going on? But as you slowly peel this onion, you'll realize it's not as difficult as you think. So I'm going to try to move quickly. Let's say I'm going to go with Sopranos. Same color. I go Altos. Tenors. And bass again. Maybe I put over here choir one and choir two. And then we have to make some decisions, as I mentioned with the with the um, um, with the strings. So let's say I'm gonna go here. It's a really dark brown. So let's say I go there with the brown, then I'm gonna say, you know what, the violin, all violins are gonna be the same. I'm gonna go a little bit lighter. With the viola. That's not much difference, but, and then let me see if I can do, maybe I use orange. Or I go as light as I can here, maybe for the chili. And then I just completely go with a different color. Kind of with an orange or something. And then I, as I score study, I start to realize, oh my goodness, okay. Um, I'm going to look here with the, the Sopranos. I'm going to go with the red. I apologize. So Sopranos, I'm going to follow them here, right? And I'm going to follow them here. And make it a little bit more transparent. And then here, right? And then I'm following along and I'm saying, okay, see? Oh, it's unison there. Okay. Where else? Um, viola clef. All right, and then let me say I'm going to skip over to the. Oh, we also have it here. Uh, let me go skip over to the alto. So we have E flat. We have C. And we realize, oh, hey, they have unison. Okay. Going back to the alto. All right, the tenors. Um, and then we look here, the basses also have that. Right, and then tenors here have a G. Well, we realize they're in unison there. 
Okay, and then I still have the E flat, which was with the altos. Okay, so I have that taken care of. I'm gonna look um, over here. Bases, like they finally can make their mark. And as I look at the second set of sopranos here, they have an A flat. We have a C, we also have a C there. Okay, we have the altos here. C may flat. See, we have a, a base F here. We can do it, or we can do it with the tenors. We do have the, yeah. Um, then I start, I'm, I know I've run out of time. I am going to use this orange. try to get them all for you. We missed that one. I apologize. I'm going to keep finding these as we go, go along as I finish up. So now I look at the score and it's come to life. I realize, gosh, everything is, is being doubled pretty much. And I can do this. That 3D picture, I see it now. Right? And just to be fair, Try to finish this up. So there it is, all of a sudden I have color all over the page. I could even mark here, you know, violin one, violin, maybe viola, cello, bass. So again, the only way to learn is through trial and error. I have often gone back and changed colors or tried different things or one piece. I may have a system and then it doesn't transfer to the next one, but uh, I hope this was valuable. Again, thank you for sharing your time with me and I wish you the best this semester.